All right, so our new topic is that uh, we've been talking about Google Search Console, also known as Webmaster Tools. Now we're going to switch to the other, more powerful cousin of Search Console, which is Google Analytics. That's the one that's the much more famous one. How many of you have heard of Google Analytics before this class? A few people. How many of you have heard of Google Search Console before this class? Less people. So Analytics is the big one. Analytics you're going to see, well, why do we have two? Why do, doesn't this tell us enough information? Uh, Search Console really is more like for the structure and the foundation to check the health of your site, the details, the nuts and bolts of your site. Analytics will tell you much more detail your traffic, how effective you are online, how well is your SEO working, and such. We do need to set them both up. And I find it interesting that Bing which is Google's biggest competitor, they've got the same sort of thing, a sort of search console slash analytics tool in one, bing.com slash toolbox. But Google at the moment has two, two screens, two logins. Maybe they're going to converge them eventually, but right now they're two separate screens. And most of the time you're going to be spending time on Google Analytics. You're still going to use Google Search Console to check the status and the health of your site, but you're usually going to use Analytics to really get things done. So let's go to google.com slash analytics. A-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S. Google Analytics. Let's go to Google Analytics. Turn insight, turn insights into action. They've recently, this year, added brand new features that I also have to educate myself in, such as Google Premium. I don't know exactly what it is. It's like a super-powered version of what we're going to look at, which is the, the default free one, this premium one. I don't know how much it costs. I haven't researched it enough to give you any true insight into it. But you're still going to get a lot of data from the free one. So at the top right corner, click Sign In. And we're going to switch, switch, choose plain old Google Analytics. It'll ask you to log in, and you can. It might ask you to log in, or you might just go directly, and it'll take you. I'm logged into an account here that's already fully set up. Yours is going to be empty, uh, so we will sort of take the same sort of time to set ourselves up like like before but uh, before I show you a fully set up site let me just look over here over on your guys screen to see what it looks like so I can tell you what to do that's, um, okay good so if you see about that's a sign up just click sign up see probably a lot of little boxes to fill in. I don't believe I can show you a, a screen that looks like that because I already set this up a long time ago. Let me just try something here. Hmm. Okay, I think, uh, just one moment, I think I can show a screen something like that. Let's see. Okay, does it look something like this? Account name, mobile app, website name and such? Okay, good. So here's what we want. Um, very much like Webmaster Tools, like Search Console. Are you going to track the data of a website or a mobile app? You most likely don't have a mobile app. We'll do website. 
Now I do have to say, unfortunately, if you've got a WordPress.com website, you cannot do this. Google Analytics does not integrate with WordPress.com at the moment. If you've, got a, if you've got a WordPress website on GoDaddy or Bluehost, for example, it'll work. If you've got another kind of website like Dreamweaver or, or Wix, those should work, Squarespace, etc. But a WordPress.com site won't work here because WordPress.com provides its own statistics. Now, here's the first confusion. Account name, website name. Let me back up to show you something here. Once you've got this fully set up, you can track the data of a variety of websites organized into folders. Each of these folders is what that screen is asking for an account name. Because, for example, with a particular client, let's say bmcinc.net, I can track the data of my main website and the YouTube channel. I can track different segments of data here on VM Campus, tracking the, uh, the YouTube, the Google Plus, the blog, uh, the DeviantArt page, etc. So this folder, the terminology is an account. These particular then sub-elements, these are, I believe they call it properties. Or uh, website URL. Okay, yeah, property right there. So the account is the folder, the way to organize. And then the actual properties are: is it the website? Is it the blog? Is it the YouTube page? What data are we tracking? So accounts are the topmost level of organization and contain one or more tracking IDs or properties. So I'm going to say I'm creating a brand new account for my website. I'm just going to call this Victor's Web Designs. What's the website name or property and its address? So maybe I'm writing here main website and I'm putting in the address victorswebdesigns.com. Because then later I can create another one called YouTube page and put the YouTube address. I can put in here blog site and put the blog link. That's the confusing aspect of this. The account name is the folder, and then the property is what website are you tracking? But, I'm sorry, why do you put in the main website as your website name? Because once you've got it organized, like in this example over here, the account is this, and then the website name is DeviantArt, the main site, the YouTube, the Google Plus. That's the name that appears there. Right, but where does it say your main website? In this example, it doesn't say main website, but it would be right here. You can name these what you want, but over here, let's. I'm, I'm just trying to like understand. I mean, it, it seems to make sense. Of them. Let's see, so you're filling in you're filling in that address. Industry category. These are um, there's a bunch of options there. You should choose the one that fits the best so that it can show you your data most accurately. If none of them fit, you can just select other. Set your time zone, data sharing settings. This is going to collect a lot of information of your traffic. Uh, would you like to then share this data with other aspects of Google? 
you won't get any penalization or anything if you turn them all off but and they're all recommended but we've got Google products and services would you like the data from analytics to also be used or shared on other products of Google would you like your data to be collected anonymously and used to create benchmarking benchmarks would you like to if if you need tech support from Google would you like to let them view your data and if you'd like an account specialist, which is basically a salesperson that is going to try to get you to buy more Google products, would you like to let them see your data? So whatever you'd like here, but it doesn't hurt if you put them all off. No, I don't want to share my data. I want to keep it only in Google Analytics. And if you need to provide your data to tech, to, to tech support, it can be activated at that point. Notice in this particular account, we've got 15 accounts set up, up to 100. Click Get Tracking ID. If you're setting this up the first time, it may ask you like seven more questions than mine does. I, not, I might not be able to show that. If it asks you a bunch of extra questions like how many people work in your company? You know, fill all that in as best as possible, which it can be edited later. But fill in all the information and then eventually you'll have Get tracking ID and then you will see the service agreement which you want to accept if you don't want to use any of this you have to say no I don't accept them you can't use it but we're gonna click accept And then you'll get um, this new screen, and I'll talk about the different screens in a moment. But uh, you get this tracking ID. This particular code is the unique code of your particular property, which is your website. And what it says, in order for us to be able to track your traffic, please add this code. It's all of this chunk right here. This chunk of code, it says, to get all the benefits, copy and paste this code into every web page you want to track. If you're using software like um, WordPress, this can be very easy to do because WordPress is based on templates. You add this code to your template and it will copy this to all your pages. If you're using a more traditional way, unfortunately, like Dreamweaver, you have to make sure you copy this, page, this code into all of your pages in order for it to work properly. You also have a way of using PHP code, which is this code here. So this is another spot where we're going to take a moment to see if we can get this set up for people. Uh, if we get it set up, there's no button that says verify. You have to add it to your site, and then it says, you know, in about 48 hours or so, then it's going to start working. I'm going to pause for a moment, and if we're, if we're able to do this on your site, we'll give it a try. And then we'll continue, and we'll see, well, what did we set up?